Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and take a look at distance today. And we're going to take a look at distance in two kind of two different formats. We're going to look at it graphically and we're going to look at, at it algebraically. So a lot like how we approached endpoint. Now, I want you to understand more than just how to find distance. By the end of this video, I want you to actually be able to understand where the distance formula comes from. So let me take a look at, let me, let's look at the graphic uh, using it on the graph and then we'll take a look at the algebra and I think if we look at it on the graph it's going to help us understand where that distance formula that you've seen before comes from I know it looks kind of long and confusing but if you can understand where it comes from and why it's set up the way it is it actually is much easier to remember so let's take a look at uh, these two points and let's find the distance so 5 negative 3 and that's gonna put me down here uh, right about there and negative 1, 6. So that's going to put me up here. So what I'm going to do when I'm doing these problems is I want to th make a right triangle. Just like with distance, we made right triangles, or even with midpoint, when you do it on a graph, we're thinking right triangles the same here. We're pretty good at figuring things out if we think in, th in terms of horizontal and vertical. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line here see if my uh, my pen will work. I kind of have some issues here. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a vertical line. I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'm going to think about this as a right triangle. Now let's count up these boxes. So that's two, four, six, eight, nine boxes on the side. And then two, let's see, two, four, six on the bottom. Now if I was just thinking about this as a right triangle and I wanted to solve for the hypotenuse, do we have a formula that helps us do that? Well, we do, right? We have a squared, b squared, c squared. Um, and this, hopefully you remember, as just being our Pythagorean theorem. And again, please excuse my bad handwriting. So we end up with 9 squared plus 6 squared is equal to c squared. Now let's go ahead and think about this. 9 squared plus 6 squared. Uh, 9 squared is 81, 6 squared is 36. We're going to add those two together. So I end up with, uh, let's see, that's 7. Um, 8 plus 3, that's going to be 11, so 117. So that's equal to c squared. And then I want to find the length. Remember, we're thinking about in terms of blocks. If it's nine blocks vertically, six blocks horizontally, it's not 117 blocks via the diagonal. We need to, what we need to do is we need to take the square root here. So we take the square root of both sides. 117 is not going to simplify nicely. Now I believe on the assignment today, part of the problems you need to simplify your radicals. We did do a delta math. If you need help with simplifying radicals, go back to week one. There's a video on how to simplify radicals. Um, and you can even do more delta math practice. Even after you finish an assignment, you can always go back and do some extra practice. So um, in this case though, I do want to think about what square root of 117 is in between. Well, I know 10 squared is 100 and I know 11 squared is 121. So this thing is going to be pretty close to 11. It's probably 10.7 or 10.8. Um, and if I think about the number of blocks, if this vertical piece here is 9, this horizontal piece could be close to 11 blocks long. That seems about right. So when we're finding distance, we're basically just doing Pythagorean theorem between two points. We're taking the vertical, we're taking the horizontal, we're making it a right triangle. So now let's look at our distance formula and see if that, if you can understand how this plays into where our distance formula comes from. So notice here with our distance formula, we have a squared thing here, a squared thing here, and we have a square root over all of it. But if I wanted to, I could actually back this distance formula up a little bit. What if I say, uh, d squared is equal to x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. So let's make that a little better y. Okay, now does that look a little close? Oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, now, does that look a little closer to our a squared, b squared, c squared? It should. This would be like my a, the x, x would be my a squared, the y's would be my b squared, 
the D would be my C squared. So this is actually just A squared, B squared, C squared. Now, let's think about what we squared in this previous problem. We squared the nine and the six. Well, what is six? Six is the distance between the two X values. It's the distance between five and negative one. So how do we find the distance between two numbers? Well, we subtract them. So all we're doing here with the subtracting of X's is we're finding the distance between this X value and this X value. How far apart are they? And then we square them. And then the same for the Y's. That's finding the distance of my vertical values. When I subtract my Y values, I'm finding the distance between Y2 and Y1. And that's all I'm doing here. So this is actually the exact same thing. We're just doing it algebraically instead of graphically. But essentially, it's just Pythagorean theorem. It's rearranged a little bit where we took square roots of both sides. But this, these x's, that's the a squared. These y's, that's the b squared. Um, and then this is c squared. So hopefully that helps you understand that this isn't just some like magic formula that works. There's a place where this formula comes from. All right, so let's take a look at a distance problem here. Uh, notice we want to find the distance between 5, 2, and negative 4, negative 1. Now, notice um, we're going to set this up. So this first one, um, 5, 2, those are going to be my x1, y1s, and, and negative 4, negative 1 is going to be my x2s, y2s. Now, when we, we want to be careful here when we're doing this. We want to make sure that the 5 and the negative 4, those are my two x values. So they're going to go in my x's here. A really common mistake is to put the 5 and the 2 within the same parentheses, and that's incorrect. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, let's plug this in. So my, uh, my x sub 2 is negative 4 minus 5. And notice the negatives are built into the formula. And then my y2 is a negative 1 minus a2. I'm going to square that. And we're going to put the square root over the whole thing here. So let's take this a little further. Negative 4 minus 5. Uh, that's going to be negative 9 squared plus negative 3 squared. Now notice what happened here. Instead of counting, um, instead of counting the distance on my graph in x's and y's, we subtracted 5 minus, or negative 4 minus 5. That's finding the distance between the spot negative 4 and 5 in terms of my x's. So instead of counting, we subtracted because subtracting finds the distance between two numbers. So I've got negative 9 and negative 3. I square both of those. I get um, 81 plus 9. And I get the square root of 90. Now, part of this, we need to simplify. Um, so I know, I see that I can definitely divide out a 9. When we're going to simplify our radicals, remember we're going to find a, a perfect square, divide that out. So I know that I could re-express this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. And the square root of 9, hopefully we know, is 3. And so my final answer here is 3 root 10. What if I made, what if I swapped them? What if I made the negative 4, negative 1 as my x1, y1, and my 5, 2 as my x2, y2? Would I end up with the same answer? Well, actually I would, right? Because the distance between negative 4 and 5 is still 9 even though it's a positive 9 instead of a negative 9, I end up with a positive 9. But when it squares, it, the negatives go away. Same with negative 1 and 2. Remember, we're checking for the distance between my two y values. That's going to be the same no matter which way I swap them. And the squared takes care of the negative. So it doesn't matter. The big thing you need to keep track of is that you never combine this negative 4 with this negative 1. You're always combining the first parts together and then the second parts together. There's no formula we have where we're adding or subtracting within the parentheses of a point. The x's are always working with the x's. The y's are always working with the y's every single time. So the biggest mistake people make is combining negative 4, negative 1. Don't do that. Combine the first with the first, the second with the second. If you do that, um, you should be fine. There's also example um, examples of how to solve these on delta math as well. So this wraps up our lesson on distance.